Buenos dias, Brendan. Cat. How's it going? I'm just going to say hi. I'm not going to speak mm -hmm. differently. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> tune ups. Tune ups. Tune ups. So um, these are for these two little dudes. So we're going to do what? Because they, they're very similar machines. They, they are. So let me show you why. I mean, essentially, the tune up kit for the Aroma and the Via Venezia, the parts that are in them are okay. exactly the same. All right. Um, so the only thing that's different about the instructions are, you know, the things you got to do to get things out of the way. I see. Um, but the brew head itself mm -hmm. on both of these, other than the, the locking bell for the portafilter, is exactly the same. Okay. So well, we're going to do it on the Via Venezia, but the instructions are exactly as you should be doing it on the Aroma. Okay. Well, can we do can we do a double team it? Can we look at, can you do them both at the same time? You, whatever you want. Look at you, multi-talented. Whatever. Multitasking. Makes, whatever makes you happy. Kate. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, here we go. All right. So, like the Sylvia, I really like turning both of these over because okay. you can just see the brew head. You see everything that's going on, and if you're going to get in there and do it, you should get in there and clean it all out and know okay. exactly what's going on. Got it. So, I'm going to remove all the accessories here. Drip tray, grate, drawer, and water tank. Whoops. Forgot that one. Mm. There's a lot of parts to the Vivenezia drip tray. But yeah. <laughs> this is 42 it's got this parts. nice little drawer, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can put your little single basket in there. Yeah. And just, oh, there it goes. Man, that, that Venezia is looking a little rough for the, for, the worse for the wear, huh? This one was in desperate need of a tune-up. <laughs> it's all to dusty. To say the least. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put that there. Um, let's do the same thing with this. But so like um, the tune-up for these would involve like doing a really great descale first. Yep. Yep. You want to do a descale first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, followed by the rinse, obviously. Yeah. And um, you wouldn't really back flush on this. Machine, no, you don't so do that. You, so it's yeah. So you're just jumping into after you do your good descale. Yep. You then would like do this work around the brew head. Exactly. And the um, <clears throat> you know the de our tune up kits come with the descale packet. Okay. So you know that would be the first and descaling directions. Nice. Which are very very helpful. Yeah. So we have this nice sheet here explaining you how to descale. Mm -hmm. And then we have this Seiko Descal packet. Nice. So that's all set up there. But let's flip these over and take a look at our brew head. And then everyone can see how similar these two things are. And B, um, how often am I doing this? Um, it really, it kind of depends on how often you're using your machine, but I'd say if you are pulling a shot with your machine on a daily basis, okay. that you'd want to do this every three months. Okay. Um, otherwise, you know, that may seem a little over the top to everyone else, you know, that hasn't seen the inside of these machines, but if you don't do it that often, then you're going to start hurting other components of the machine. It's and just, your coffee won't taste as good. That's true, exactly. And that's very important. Um, so a descale should be every one to three months regardless of use. But then exactly. if I'm doing it every day, I want to do this every few months. What if I'm just using my machine on the weekends? Maybe twice a year? Uh, yeah, I'd say I'd say replace these parts um, every six months. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, a good rule of thumb is maybe every three times you descale it, replace the brew head gasket in the screen. Okay, yep. got it, every third time, yep. got it, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> as we can see here, we have our screen Yummy. and our screw in the middle, and this one looks like it's in a little bit better condition, but you know what I mean, the, these, yeah. this part of the machine is identical. Got it, okay. Except, you know, we have this kind of brushed finish here for the Via V, and then we have more of a stainless here. So why don't, since this one looks like it's going to be more of a prize as far as just janky yeah, grodiness, let's go after kidding. that one. Yep, okay. <laughs> so we got, we got our Phillips here. Now you're going to need a short one because there's not a lot of room here. A stubby. Yep, exactly. We're going to take this right out. And now a good thing to do is I know a lot of customers have trouble with this because it can get really tight from just getting hot and cold, hot and cold. Okay. Um, if you do notice grounds all in there, mm -hmm. be, you know, get in there and clean out the grounds before you try unscrewing this. Otherwise, you're going to start stripping that screw, and then you're going to have a heck of a time getting that out. And eventually, okay. you might actually just have to send it into a repair shop so they can get it out. I um, see. So if you see any grounds in there, try to get in there, get them all out, and have a clean surface so you won't strip your screw. Okay. So the screw's out. Now our screen can come free quite easily from the brew head gasket itself. Boom. Let's take you know, and our, our, no, our, it's our, not actually that bad. It's not that bad. I saw some on the. Oh, sorry. I saw it on the outside. I was like, that's gonna be. You know, yeah, like it, it doesn't. Like, caked up. The big tell is holding your screen up to the light, and seeing how many holes are not. You know, you can't see through. Yeah. 
And this one isn't that bad. I mean, okay. I'd say like 80% of the holes are see-through and you know, so it wasn't doing that much damage. Okay. Okay, so let's see how we can get this brew head gasket out. Mm -hmm. um, a good trick is getting a screw mm -hmm. and threading it into the brew head gasket. Okay, so it's a tapered screw that has a, a, a point. Exactly, okay. exactly. And this is just a wood screw that's pretty sharp, so you don't have to be that aggressive in getting it in there. You know, I'm not going to put that much force on here. Okay. I'm just, and it's something to hold on to. That's all it is. You know, because it, sometimes it can be hard to pry this stuff out without hurting the metal that's around it. Because mm -hmm. you really want to be sure that that stuff remains, you know, cool. So as you can see, I'm threading this in there, and it's actually pushing it up, I and mean, it's making this process very, very easy. So let me, I'm just gonna keep on pulling this. We got a good start here. Mm -hmm. And I might, now I can get my flat head, now that I've and created some. It up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. But the, the brew head gasket, it's, it's, a, it's almost an art getting it in and out, because it's really just, most of it's held in by friction, mm -hmm. and then the threading of the, uh, of the screens themselves, but let me I'm see. Trying to get a good angle here. There we go. Yeah. One good spot to do it is where the the ears are for your portafilter. Oh, okay. You know, so that's a really good area to work because okay. you know there's some space there and you can get a little bit of a better angle. So now that I have one side completely up, mm -hmm. I'm just working my way around and getting the whole thing out all the way around. So in my tune-up kit for my Aroma or my Via Venezia, I am going to receive a new one of these gaskets. Yep, exactly. And a new screen and screw. Exactly. And then some other parts that we're about to uncover right now. Uh-oh. Oh, hello. We're not even close to being done, Kat. Meow. <laughs> okay. So we got those three out. Brew head gasket, old one, mm -hmm. the screen, and the screw. Okay. And now you can see, I mean, there's, there's grounds in here, you know, and... You don't, that's not good. You want to get all those out, make sure that surface is clean. So you're kind of getting your brush out, a little detergent, yeah. kind of scrubbing around, just I, to make sure that there's nothing down in there when you're putting that gasket down, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, um, yeah, there are two more parts that we need to replace in here. Oh. But I'd say having a vacuum is, is in your best interest as well, because then you can kind of wipe it down and just get everything out, you know, if you can get a little nozzle in there, if you had a vacuum like that. Does like, the vacuum come with the tune-up kit, or is that something I, I need to find? Unfortunately, it does not. Okay. It does not. Got I wish it, it did. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, this next part is very interesting. Now, <laughs> um... It's called the boiler outlet bushing. Okay. okay. And it's and it's holding in um, your spring and your ball valve, which is making the seal with your boiler. Um, and that needs to come out because your spring can wear down. Okay. And the spring's very specific in terms of the amount of pressure it needs to compress when the pump is activated. Got it. So we need to take that out. Now, here at Seattle Coffee Gear, the repair team has made this very nice tool. <laughs> getting this part out. <laughs> now, um, other things that have worked are sometimes people take two screens and put them back to back. Okay. If you don't feel like this is very tight. Um, other people have used a quarter and that has worked for them, but a lot of people have found screwdrivers with this dimension at their, you know, Home Depot or any hardware store. So they can, I mean, the trick is, is this is really wide here. So you need to get something that's wide enough to go from each end of the bushing. I see. So you, this is a special tool that we have here. Exactly. But you, so you could like do, this one obviously wouldn't work. I see. Because it's this is not wide enough mm -hmm. to get to each edge of the bushing. But then also we have we like trimmed this guy down so that it's a shorter dude as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, I think the screwdriver used to be about this long. Yeah. <laughs> and trimmed right down. But it works like a charm. Okay. Like a champ almost. Yeah, it totally does. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We're going to remove the bushing now. Let's see how sometimes... Oh, that wasn't too bad. Sometimes those are really tight. You know, one thing I'd also like to mention too, and I should have probably already, mm. is you should just... You should have your steam valve open. Oh, okay. Because if there's any pressure, this... Sometimes when you take this out and you get to like the last thread of the bushing, mm -hmm. it'll just pop out, you know, because there's a little okay. pressure there. I mean... I see. Your machine, obviously, when you're doing this stuff, shouldn't be hot. You shouldn't have used it in the last hour, hour and a half. Okay. You know, you don't, you don't want anything hot, essentially. And then, so if you open up your steam valve, there's no pressure here. You've kind of let the pressure out. Okay. No water is going to come out because you have the machine upside down. But, so there, I relieve the pressure here because I open the steam valve. And I'm about, almost got this whole, okay, there's the whole bushing. Okay. So we're taking the bushing out. As you can see, that, you know, it's not too complicated. Mm-hmm. 
But then, this is what we were getting to. Ah, oh, the and spray. This, yeah, and as you can see, you know, it looks a little worn down. Yeah. You know, um, this should be completely clear. You know, it just looks like it's, you know, it's been used. You know, it's, it does it's look like it's... It's coffee stained. Totally. Yeah. Um, so, that was, those are all the things we're replacing in this tune-up kit. We don't replace the bushing because this doesn't ever fail. Okay. Um, the bushing's always totally fine. Um, unless, you know, something weird happens, you know, if this, if something goes bad with this, you should probably be sending in your machine for repair. Okay. Um, so my tune-up kit is going to come with these guys, this guy, and that. Exactly. All right, let's now see let it. Now get it, let's get our, our new stuff out here. This is so exciting. It is. We're going to have a brand new wow. brew head here. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> screen, screw. Ball valve and valve spring. The little dude. Yep. And so then it comes together like already with this. Yeah, I, I always. Okay. Uh, I'm actually the one that's putting these together, believe it or not. And before they ship out, I make sure every ball valve is in the valve spring. Nice. And unless something weird happens in shipping, there it's you'll snug. be all set. Yeah. Snug. Snug. Now let's look. Take a look here. Okay. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Quite different. Yeah, and you, you can't really see the difference with the springs, but like I said, this this spring is meeting the actual pressure from the pump. So this is just sitting there, and as soon as you activate your pump, mm -hmm. it's enough pressure for this to just go down and release the water. That's mm -hmm. all that's happening. Um, so it's really nice to replace these. And okay. things that you'll notice when you replace these are like, if you're brewing and you're seeing it dripping from your steam wand, um, uh, that you want to you want to replace this. Okay, so that's one of the signs yep. hallmarks. Okay, exactly. Or if like if you're getting up to temp, and it's dripping from your brew head, it's not making an adequate seal there. You want to replace the same this thing. because it's like it can't withstand the pressure of it heating up, mm -hmm. and so the ball valve is just going down a little bit, and it's and it's letting pressure go. I and see. you don't really want that. It's not good for your machine. Okay, so I put. So how do I place it back in there? Okay, well the the big thing is I think a lot of people they try to go down like that but you obviously want your ball valve going down in okay so i'm gonna so the put little, the little doodad the yeah, little the exactly. rubber part goes exactly the into valve the yeah the valve okay. should be going down of course if you have your machine <clears throat> upside down so it should be going up into it or exactly. down into it okay exactly now we're going to take <clears throat> our bushing again and just the i mean this is very easy because the threading does all the hard work just make sure that spring is going right into the bushing and is centered with the bushing itself mm -hmm. so i'm going to push down and you have to compress the spring a little bit with your hand for it to meet up with the threads and then you start it. And I'm starting to turn. Okay. And now, and now it's, it's good. It's it's just not tight, but I know everything's situated there. Because, you know, the channel within the bushing is guiding it, mm -hmm. um, and it, and it's putting the spring where it needs to be, and the ball valve. So now, I'm going to get in here, and I'm just going to start tightening. And do I tighten it as far as it will go, or do I just do it to a snug fit? Like, is it really important that it's like, you know, no. I'm, getting, I'm getting some Hulk in there, or no? No, it's not. I would just, I'll, I'll, yeah. It's, so like it's, right there. Yeah, and it's clear when it has to stop. Okay. Like there's no, it's not like I'm feeling it getting tighter. It's just. It it's, stops. It's kind of bottoming it out, if you will. I see. And then you just stop, and it's and it's good to go. Okay. Um, and now we are ready for our brew head gasket. So we got our fresh new gasket. We have a fresh new gasket. Okay. And sometimes things I try to do when I'm getting this in there is maybe bend it like that a little bit okay and then you can kind of always use these you know the ear locks I don't know if that's what it's called but that's what I call them for the porta filter just to get a good angle um, for your you know getting things in and out of here because mm -hmm. it can be kind of tricky and like I said this this kind of stuff does take a little elbow grease you know folding it you're not gonna hurt the brew head gasket okay um, by folding it and putting lots of pressure on it you know maybe with something sharp you know if you're using a flat head screwdriver or something like that you want to be careful not to puncture it but I'm almost, I'm almost completely in here and ready to go. Okay. And could I, could I make sure that it is snug by like just locking my porta filter in? That is a great thing to do. Okay. Um, it, putting your porta filter in there and locking it will really. It'll push it up. Exactly. Seal and if, up. and if you're not able to do that, something's going on. Okay. Something's going on. Hold the presses. Yeah, exactly. Don't put that screen on yet. You got some more work to do. <laughs> Equally. Okay. And one important thing to remember is, this this edge should be facing down. 
you know, this is what the this is the surface the porta filter is making contact with. Okay. Now, if you try to put your thing in like that, your brew head gasket in like that, it's going to be really it's, easy. It's not going to it's not, <laughs> not going to work at all. You're going to your your porta filter won't even be able to lock into the ears because now it's it's got this extra whatever quarter inch there, and it, okay. it won't even be able to meet. So you want to be putting it in like that, and this is the surface your porta filter is making contact with. Got it. Okay. So. So we snug down we in there. We are two out of three. All right, and now our new screen. New screen, new screw. We'll put those on there, and we are just about home free here. Thank God. <laughs> this was quite an adventure, B. It was. Okay, now we got this. We're going to put this right down here, and you're literally just screwing. Let's try to get that centered with the gas a little better. There we go. You're literally just screwing this in right into the bushing that we just in, we, we put back in. Oh, okay. So that's what that's what the threads from the screw. I see. The brew screen screw are meeting up with. Okay, and I'm gonna go and then it's the same thing with this. It doesn't really bottom out, but you don't want to over tighten this. You just want to get it until it's pretty snug. I'm probably gonna do another quarter turn and we're good. Okay. And that you you have just installed the tune up kit on your Via Venezia. Or your aroma. Or your Roma. It's the exact same, same thing. Same exact process. Exactly. You can see that these are, other than the, the bell lock for your porta filter, yeah. it is the exact same thing. Same brew head gasket, same spring, same ball valve. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. So that is the uh, tune up kit process for the Seiko Roma. It is. And the Seiko Via Venezia. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Brandon. Anytime.